Inside Science. Hello, science friends. My name is Ali Jennings, and here is a quick roundup of what's been going on in the world of science this month. And we've got a lot to get through, so let's get to it. First, the moon landings anniversary. 50 years ago, on the 20th of July, 1969, humans first landed on the moon. There you go. But I'm not going to go into that because there's just too much other sciencey goodness going on. So if you're interested, have a look at Inside Science's special edition on it instead. But before you go, let me give you a vision of the future. A forest world of a trillion new trees fighting global warming with us. A new paper published this month calculated how much space there is on the planet for planting new forest. Now, using 78,774 measurements from photos of protected forests from across the world, the researchers worked out how different environments affect the potential for tree cover. They then applied that to the whole world to see how much space there is for new forest. Lots is the answer. When you exclude existing forests, urban and agricultural areas, there is still almost a billion hectares of space to plant trees. And that's roughly the area of the US. Room for more than one trillion trees. Now this would suck around 25% of the carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere over the next 100 years. This is so exciting because it's just so doable. We should do it. Or we could resign ourselves to decade-long mega droughts throughout the American Southwest, spending huge sums of money on artificial snow to stop the West Antarctic ice sheet from melting and flooding New York, losing all the Joshua trees in the Joshua Tree National Park, and having all the Cape Verde loggerhead turtles be born female. Just a handful of studies published this month about how climate change will brutalize the planet. Come on, guys, let's plant some trees. Anyway, enough about the forests themselves. Let's talk about what lives in them. A new study has looked at the social relationships of gorillas in the jungles of the Democratic Republic of Congo. It found that gorillas hang out with close family much of the time, which we kind of already knew, but that they also have another tier of extended family, aunts, uncles, cousins, that they also see regularly. And then another tier of unrelated friends, much like an early human tribe. There was even a suggestion that different groups may all congregate sometimes, kind of like a festival gathering. Now we've seen these kind of social structures in other mammals before, in toothed whales and baboons and elephants. But until now, we thought that humans were unique among the primates. Now, it looks like these social structures may be the rule, not the exception. We have so much still to understand about living things, it's almost painful. I mean, this month, researchers found a tree stump in the forests of New Zealand that's being kept alive by its neighbours, as though the forest itself is some sort of super organism. It's the stuff of science fiction, the wood wide web. Please, please read more about that in this Inside Science article. Oh dear, we started talking about forests and I got all excited again. Let's end on something completely different. Robots. A team from Switzerland have created mass-producible millibots, weighing less than half an ounce each that can be assigned different roles, then left to work as a team to move through an environment, performing different tasks. Now, what's super cool is that these robots are actually inspired by nature, specifically by the jumping capability of jaw trap ants. But Nature still outdoes the machines in size to energy efficiency by orders of magnitude. It's almost like we still have so much to understand from nature. Anyway, it's amazing to think that these robots could be released on their own to autonomously explore new planets, but also difficult not to imagine them turning on the human race and ultimately devouring us, albeit very slowly. On the road to cyborgs this month, a team of researchers created artificial skin that can detect temperature, pressure, and object slippage. And another team built heat-activated carbon nanotube artificial muscle. And yet another team made these tiny microbots that harness vibrations to move for reasons unknown. And I'm afraid I have to wrap it up now. And we didn't even get onto the gene-stealing parasite plants. Well, I told you there was a lot. Anyway, I guess I'll have to see you next month. Goodbye. 
Inside Science. If you enjoyed this edition, follow us on the web and social media. Powered by the American Institute of Physics and a coalition of underwriters.